everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team gets to join you live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern, streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. It is February 13th, which means we know love is in the air for tomorrow. And I have to tell you, I love our guest. I can I can officially phrase this with full love and support. Megan is here and I'm so excited that we I get to like officially interview her. If you're not familiar with Megan Polkey, you absolutely will have a treat ahead. She is a new, I was gonna say new member of the team. She is the newest of new members of the team. So new, but she's definitely not new to this Teach Better family. So excited to talk shop and honestly, before we hit the big red button, we were talking about our favorite TV shows and podcasts. So we're gonna talk about that. We'll be right back. Everyone, thanks for tuning in to Teach Better Today Morning Show. My name is Ray Hewart. We have Megan Palkey in the house. Hey, Megan. Hey, Ray. How are you? I'm good. And can we just like talk about the elephant in the room that I said love was in the air, and then like hearts appeared on your like? How did you do that? Did you? I don't know. It's not happening anymore. Like, what happened? I don't know. But I've been seeing that a lot. Like in that we're currently like streaming in something called Streamyard, and even in Zoom, like. If you hold your thumb up in like a like a thumbs up position or like thumbs down or hearts, like, see there we like, go. Up. Yeah. Why can't I ever do it? It's usually Jeff who can make it happen. It's magic. It's teacher magic. Teach better magic. I want teach better magic to happen to me. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was great because love is in the air with Valentine's Day tomorrow. But Megan, who are you? You're on the show. I know a lot about you, but let's just pretend you're new and nobody knows who you are. Do you want to introduce yourself? So I'm Megan Polky. I am a seventh grade special education teacher in Plano. I've been teaching for, gosh, 13 years. I co-teach uh, math and language arts. I have a grid classroom and a self-contained math class where I'm working on implementing grid in there as well. Ooh, fancy schmancy. And you officially have another thing to add to your description of who you are because you're officially a, the newest member of the Teach Better team, which must seem weird because I've been trying to convince you to join the Teach Better team for like a decade. <laughs> so. Which I'm so excited to continue to learn from the team, continue to learn from the community and have a bigger impact. Do you, have a, do you have a fake title that you officially can announce? I feel like I, I think we made up your title as like training and development specialist. Does that sound right? Sounds right. Okay. I feel like everyone on the team has titles that somewhat make sense. So that feels like it kind of fits you. I don't know. As long as there's some like green hearts attached to like the end of that, I'm go I'm great with it. I love it. Guys, I met Megan. Megan, did we meet? When I was at Plano, that can't be the first time we met, was it? Uh, definitely either Plano or maybe Ames. Yeah. So I feel like Megan and I like cross paths a bunch. Yes. And then finally, uh, right or wrong, I like cornered her in the room. It was like, tell me your story. What's your deal? And guys, Megan has the best. Okay. Take this for a grain of salt. I don't mean to be weird. Megan, you have the best brain. I love your brain. Yes. <laughs> you do. You're a wonderful person. You're an incredible educator, but you're so focused on using all those like data supported research strategies and making them accessible for all students. And you seem to be, no matter if I catch you on a rainy day, a snowy day, a sunny day, in the middle of summer, it doesn't matter. That is like always what fuels you. You are always somebody eager to help with like this great approach to problem solving. I just, I want to be like you, like so bad. <laughs> I feel like my personality is just total cheerleader. And if you walk into my classroom, it looks like school spirit threw up all over the place. Like just enthusiasm, spirit and championing kids. It's my jam. But don't you feel like, like people pick on us because I want to put myself in that category, like educators that seem to be in a good mood all the time. There's always this stigma of like, oh, don't worry, they'll break or, oh, 
you know, they're they're putting on a show. I'm like, no, sometimes people are just really an annoyingly happy all the time. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Especially like first class advisory. I've had a cup of coffee. Like I'm in it. And it, honestly, it just, it helps. It helps me cope. It has, helps me get through the day. It helps me get through tough times and continue to push on. Well, and the one thing, Megan, you will have so much to share with the team, but the one element I'm very excited to learn from you specifically, I'm going to like literally stalk you. Like my, I'm literally going to like try and be your assistant on the team to learn from you, but you are so passionate about the special education space, the co-teaching space. And as a student in special education growing up and as an educator who's had a lot of co-teaching experience myself, um, I love that this is something you're passionate about because so many members of our team come from different walks of life. We really cover K-12, not only classroom, but coaching and leadership. And I think you really allow the team to even diversify that beyond what we currently offer simply because this is a space you're passionate about. You've worked in this space for a long time and it's your day-to-day -day role as a you know current educator in the trenches. Well, and it's so funny when I initially started GRID, I did not go to the original GRID training. My co-teacher did. And it was the beginning of the school year. And she was like, I went to this awesome training. I want to start it in at least one of my sections. And I think it was her and I's second year co-teaching together. And she was like, we don't have to try it in our section. And the, the more she talked about grid and mastery learning and standards-based grading, I was like, no, 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 no. Like, this is good for all kids. Like, of course, I want to jump into our co-taught section. Like, this is all of the things that are good for all kids on top of our kids with IEPs. So we jumped in and I jumped into it without even having the training and just learning on the go from my co-teacher. And then obviously support from Chad and Ray and the amazing Teach Better team. Oh, so fun. Yeah. And Megan, I know that you've been able to try a lot of things in your classroom and problem solve different. I'm just very excited for, you know, this opportunity for people to reach out, not to only members of the team they're familiar with, but the new members of our team as well to ask questions because we all come from different backgrounds and different perspectives. And there really are some quote unquote standard things that we're all going to recommend. But on the flip side, I'll be honest, if you reach out to me for certain ideas or you reach out at Katie Miglin, yes, we, te we, we taught similarly. Yes, we even taught even the same type of students, but we approach things differently. We have different teaching preferences. We have different go-to strategies. And Megan, I feel like you continue to bring that as well. And um, I think that's the beautiful part of having a team that includes people like Joshua Samper and Brad Hughes and Amanda Bullen and, all, you know, Andrea. It's, it's just we have all these different perspectives that have this, have these pillars that they stand on, which is good instruction, right? Totally. Well, because kind of what's, good, what's good for kids is good for all kids and good teaching is good teaching. And I think there's so many ways to build in differentiation and scaffolds within the grid framework to reach all kids, even if they struggle. It's so fun. So if Megan looks familiar to you, Megan, haven't you also been featured on a 12 hour live? Yeah, that was so much fun. Yes. Awesome. Good. See, there's been a lot of different things and obviously you can connect with Megan a ton of ways. We're going to transition here for a second because Megan, I do want to pick your brain on who you are besides being a new member of the Teach Better team because you're an incredible educator. You do so many things and you've been training like crazy, which I don't know how you balance that with teaching full time when I did it years previously. It was very stressful. So we're going to get right into that. Um, while we make this transition, I want to encourage all of you to fill up your coffee and uh, feel free to project us either on the big screen, your television, or if you're listening on your phone, we'd love to make sure we're a part of this conversation. We'll be right back. team talk section of the Teach Better Today morning show with Megan. I definitely want to get to know Megan 
as an amazing human and then also, of course, as the amazing educator she is. Megan, tell us a little bit about your life outside of education. Do you have like a life outside of education? Do you have a hobby or two that you enjoy? Oh, gosh, I like so many things. So definitely a Chicago sports enthusiast. Enthusiast. I like my cheerleader personality loves going to games, whether it's the Cubs, the Hawks, the uh, Bears, which hopefully they'll have a better season next year. Mm. Oh, man. And I also love trash TV. And what I mean by that is just like TV where you don't have to think, you can unwind and just enjoy the laughs, the drama, and relax and unwind from your day. Megan, it's it's like it's like you're my soulmate. It's like you're my soulmate bringing this up because before we click the big record button, um, we were talking about some of the trash TV, trash podcasts that we both enjoy. And sometimes I feel embarrassed, especially on the Teach Better platform, like talking about things that are non-education related. But as we were discussing earlier, it's important to have those outlets that are not the education podcasts, not the education shows you tune into, tune into, but the other pieces of content to help you relax, unwind, and I don't know, live a more well-rounded life. What, what's your go-to? Give me your go-to. Bravo has so many things. Like I love all the housewives, Vanderbump rules, just like TV where I can watch the drama and the gossip unfold, but not be impacted by it, but just enjoy it knowing that I can unwind and giggle a little bit. There are two different, there's two viewers we have right now. One is listening to this, rolling their eyes, being like, oh my God, I can't believe she just brought up Bravo. I'm never going to connect with Megan again. And the other is like, absolutely. And can name every single character. There's, there's no middle. There's no middle. <laughs> I have to say, I am kind of a nerd about, okay, there's this podcast called Mean Girl Pod, which I've alluded to in the past, but I don't think I've ever actually said the title. And they're just these two fabulous New York women who get on a podcast and talk. And to be honest, like, may we all have that job where people will pay us thousands of thousands of dollars to sit on a podcast and be fabulous in New York. However, instead, we're in this field and we're going to make a huge impact. Whatever. So I, I tagged one of them on social media and she like responded to me and was like, like gave me an authentic response, not just a heart, but like text and everything. And I literally was like geeking out. I'm like, OMG, a celebrity liked it. Something I did. Which is so awesome. <laughs> it's just so funny. Like the things that we do where there's like education celebrities, like educators in the field doing great work that I'm like, hee hee. Like I met them or like introduced myself at a conference. And then there's those like online celebrities that may not be education related that you're like, hee hee, they know who I am for 14 seconds of my life. <laughs> but as much as I love education and I do, and I love consuming all of the educational things, it's just nice to unwind and not think and have a little bit of an outlet that's not thinking or making a million decisions. Yeah, friends, if you are not sure what your outlet is, maybe it's sports, maybe it's TV shows, maybe it's, um, I, I mean, truly any hobby falls into this, any DIY, any anything, uh, I'd love to hear that in the comments. Megan and I are always looking for new hobbies because I think it's good. Like I love watching soccer. I watercolor sometimes. I obviously listen to trashy podcasts that are amazing. I'm trying to think of oh I'm I tried to learn French oh the biggest one right now is I'm trying to learn piano that's okay. actually I feel like that one's replacing my French I really piano has been a little bit more fulfilling so well, and then making time intentional time with loved ones too I know my husband and I like cards even if it's gin rummy or Monopoly deal or Uno just some intentional quality time to like not think unwind and connect. Ooh, that could be your Valentine's Day plans, Megan. Tomorrow, you guys could like sit down and play Uno together. <laughs> it sounds perfect. I love it. How cute. Okay, so what about education related? Obviously, we've highlighted a few things you do, but something keeping you really busy, which I just, again, I like bow down to you for the work you're doing, is you are working with a lot of different school districts, primarily like, what do you think, like central area, like Midwest, Yep. on co-teaching work and special education support. I'd love to hear what type of work you're doing now. And I hope that that amplifies 20 fold, obviously with our teach better community now 
being able to, to connect with you a little bit more deeply. Tell us a little bit about that work. So when I first started co-teaching at the beginning of my career, I originally learned about like some of the co-teaching frameworks and what could that that could look like in a classroom. But I never received any professional development on like how to actually do that with a secondary person in the room. So I've really focused a lot of my time working alongside educators on how to facilitate those conversations with your co-teachers. So you're not just stuck in this place where it's one teach, one assist but you're having proactive conversations on how to truly maximize having both adults in the classroom. You know, it's interesting as I reflect on my co-teaching, I have had some really rough co-teaching relationships. And then I also, on the flip side, had a amazing, amazing, shout out to Michelle Durden, amazing co-teacher. But I almost felt like even though I worked with her for maybe three, four years, I didn't even get to like foster that relationship as much as I sh- could have because she was amazing with so se- such an array of skill sets. But that was my first exposure to like how co-teaching had so much potential. And then I don't know that I ever got to like the ideal space because it was almost a whole new playing field to to navigate. And depending on your personality, you may or may not be comfortable facilitating those some of those conversations or not know where to begin with them. So a lot of my work with educators is what should we be talking about and how do we talk to each other about that? So when we walk into the classroom, prior to walking into the classroom with students, we've had those conversations, we've made a game plan, and then students can benefit from both of our expertise and differentiation from both of us. Mm, see this, I could literally have this conversation with you forever and have you break down like minute by minute with our community here. Something I really value and uh, love about the, the today morning show is trying to find ways to expose our community to things that they can keep in mind or try as soon as today, or even just keep in mind as they head into their week. Is there any strategies that we can suggest to our community here uh, to be able to highlight you know, the, the, how they can foster better co-teaching practice. Cause I assume within our community, a big chunk of them have the opportunity to work with other people. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is just having that mindset of we are a team and this is our classroom. And once you have that mindset, it's almost that our and we goal. So then when you walk into how do we share our class, how do we support all kids you now have this expectation in your, your this expectation in your goal that we are going to do this together. And then just talk about all the things. And when I say all the things, I mean everything. Like not only just like instruction and assessment, but like behavior management and sharpening pencils and our pet peeves and our sense of humor, like all the things that would be necessary to build that relationship and build that trust when you're working together and in your shared classroom. You know, I've never thought of this comparison. So please tell me if I'm like totally off base, but when two people are are dating and seeing each other and they get to the point that one of them moves into the other one's home, that's kind of what I see as this co-teaching relationship is this person is entering into your classroom, which is a very, very important culture and environment to have. And they, you, there's two ways to do it. One is welcome to my home. You should be feel comfortable being here. And the other is welcome to my home. Let's make it our home and not just have it be, oh, this is where my, my office is. This is where my bedroom is. But, but really being able to, to sit together and be like, this is what the office currently looks like. Should we change it to, to support your needs now that you're going to be here so often? And this is what the reading nook looks like. And does that fit what we hope to build together? And I don't know that I've made that comparison. What is your, what are your thoughts on that? It's such a great comparison because the, the old, um, the old adage that co-teaching really is a marriage is true. The only difference is usually in a marriage, you get to pick your partner A lot of times when you co-teach, you don't get to pick your partner. And even though you may have phenomenal colleagues, it's exactly what you just said. It's now building this whole conversation around like, but what does this look like for us? And the same way that in a dating relationship or when you move in together, you get married, you talk about like, does the toilet paper go over or under? Like, where do you squeeze the toothpaste? 
you basically have those same conversations in your classroom. Like, can kids sharpen their pencils? Like, how do we take attendance? Like, can kids shout out? Do they raise their hand? Like, all of those things you basically have to reestablish in your shared classroom versus this is one person's room and the other person's going to tiptoe on eggshells. Yeah, it's so interesting. I wonder if that mentality can get, get anybody here listening to the Teach Better Today morning show thinking through that if they're making those connections, how to approach future conversations. Maybe, Megan, it's as simple as like starting with the first five minutes of the class and throughout the next week discuss different increments of time because we don't always have like hours and hours to collaborate with our co-teacher. That's actually a part of the problem I see. So maybe it's like, hey, we're going to dedicate some time talking about like the first five minutes of class. And then when we get the next chunk of time, we're going to talk about the next five minutes. And maybe it's a slow process over time. But I really do feel like that builds respect between two people. Absolutely. And just being open and willing to see how someone else does it. And then also be open and willing to share how you approach something. And then whether that's trying someone's approach or trying to find each other's way where you can meet in the middle and do a little bit of both. Hmm. So interesting. I bet you could use a lot of these strategies for like a mentee-mentor relationship as well and everything in between. So friends, I want to make sure you reach out to Megan. She really is somebody that I trust. I have her phone number. I text her different questions I have. She's absolutely a phenomenal brainstorm partner. And Megan, something I really appreciate about you and a lot of people in our community is you never seem to be judgmental. It's always like, hey, happy to help. And then like everyone goes on with their day. I really appreciate that low stress approach. So Megan, do you mind sharing how our community can stay connected to you? Yeah, totally. My Twitter or X, whatever we're calling it these days is at Megan Palky. If you find me on Facebook or Insta, I am also Megan Palky. So pretty easy. So good. And then obviously Megan is officially featured at teachbearer.com as a training and development specialist. She'll be somebody that creates a lot of content for our team. And of course, if you're looking for any ideas of specific content, or if you're looking for some blogs, uh, let us know. We can force Megan to to blog and create because that's the beauty of of having a, a wide community here. So Megan, I appreciate you being on the show. It's always so fun to talk to you. And I'm glad we get to do it more and more often. I appreciate being here and being part of the community and learning from everybody. So fun for everyone else. We hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Do not be a stranger and happy Valentine's Day tomorrow. Make sure to go out and buy those flowers before you forget. (laughs) Bye guys. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. (laughs) The comments are always so entertaining. (laughs) We'll see you tomorrow. 